there are a lot of program handling functions that you can use within easy screens like this copy program file with CP so CP and then in parentheses you have your source file and then you have your target file so you can copy one .mpf program to a different directory there is delete program so you could delete a program with the DP and then you just give it the file name inside of the parentheses with the quotation marks. There is an existing program file check function with EP. So you can do an EP to check whether you have that program resident in your program file. You can use MP to move a program from a source to a target. You also have the SP function, which is select program. And you just do SP and then you give it the file name. If the file name is in a workpiece directory, you have to give it the extension. In this case here, they show an example of sp slash slash nc slash mpf dot dir slash myprog dot mpf. And then the next thing that they're doing is they're using a variable to check the status of this sp command. Without a return value, you just give it the extension. There's also the generate code command or gc command. And the gc command, you give it an identifier and you give it a target file and then you have an option for generating comments which the comment generation is actually for being able to recompile the program once it's output kind of like a cycle 83 if you have this option turned to a one it will create the code but it won't let you recompile it it won't let you open the easy screen dialog back up and make changes to it. I find that just leaving it at default setting is fine. And then at the very end, we have the append type. We can overwrite the file or we can add to the file. So if the file already exists, the old content is deleted. If the file exists, new code is written at the start of the file. And then if the file already exists, a new code is written at the end of the file. So you can either delete and rewrite the program you can append to the top or you can append to the bottom. So let's talk a little bit more about variables and kind of skim the surface on PLC bit manipulation. In my code, I created a variable called work offset. Well, W-R-K-O-F-S. I created it as an integer value, solid number, no decimal. I put in my long text, short text, and help text. I made it a WR5 so that it takes a change instantaneously without having to hit input. The two fields prior to the very last field, so this is the last field, this is color, this area here. This field here, this is position of the variable box. And this field here is position of the text. I'm positioning the text 250 in X and 350 in Y from the upper left corner of the easy screen up here. And I'm positioning the variable box 350, which puts the variable and all of its respective fields down here. Inside of my easy screen, I also have a helper variable called WRKOFSOUT. So this is a work offset output variable. So I'm taking in the variable with this integer value. I'm using this helper to do some calculating. And then I'm outputting this value post calculation. I have my vertical soft key set up to display work offset. Inside of my press method for VS2, I have an if conditional that says if the work offset variable is greater than or equal to 54 and work offset variable is less than or equal to 57, we will write PLC parameter value. We'll do a calculation against the work offset variable. And we'll say work offset out variable is equal to work offset variable minus 52. We'll write another parameter value. We'll assign this output string variable, which is up here, another helper variable, to the output string which defines the file location and the program that we wish to create. We'll then use a GC call, which is generate code. We'll then use the work call output method to call up this output method here, which will then output this code, G and an eight in square brackets equals as a defined string, 
and then we will output work offset out variable next to that, which is concatenating in a way, but in this case, it doesn't require the symbols. Underneath that, we output an M30, which ends the output, and then our little program output is complete. The SP is select program, and we're selecting the program from the output string, which again is our defined subprogram, and then we're writing another parameter value. To see what these PLC values are doing, the easiest way that I found is to go into Sinutrain, go to Menu Select, Diagnostics, and then the NC PLC Variables page here. If we go to Insert Variable, we can search for different variables that are available to us in the NC system, the Axis system, PLC, global user data, system variables, etc., etc. Or we could just simply search for a keyword that we can find. In my case, I chose channel1.a underscore reset. If we double click on that, it'll load it into the table. I already have it loaded, so I don't have to double click on it again. And if I go to show machine control panel and I press the reset button, we'll see that the value changes from zero to one which lets me know that this is the variable that I want to use in my easy screen program. If I cursor up to that variable in the little help file, it displays db21.dbx7.7. If we go back to the easy screen program, right here we see db21.dbx7.7. And we're writing this parameter with the value of one. So what is this doing? As soon as we start inside of here, if the conditions are met, it will trigger a reset on our control. This variable gets written by work offset variable minus 52. When you're using G and eight in square brackets, unlike a dollar sign P underscore UIFR, inside of there, our G54 would be one whereas on a G8 it's 2. So if we took 54 minus 52, we would get 2. So in the work offset variable, I'm commanding 54. Internally, it's calculating out to a 2, assigning it to work offset out, and then in our output call, we're outputting that variable alongside the G with the 8 in the square brackets. This db11.dbx0.0, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, will select auto mode regardless of what mode we're currently in. This output string is another helper variable that we've created up here that just stores the string value of our directory and subprogram that we are creating. So we're creating a subprogram called run.spf in the workpiece directory temporary work folder. GC is generate code. Inside of generate code, we do a work call and work call brings us down to the output method called work call. And inside of there, we're generating G square bracket eight equals, and then two, three, four, or five. And then underneath that, just an M30. Once we do that, SP is for selecting program. So we do all of our conditional checks, we hit the reset button, we calculate a value, we write it to this program, we select auto mode, we activate the program, and then this PLC parameter write commands a cycle start. So if we're in Sinutrain, and I go back to my machine menu, right now I have G56 active. If I go into my example program, under my work offset, if I select 54, and press work offset, it'll say another application has changed this file, do we wish to reload? If I hit OK and I exit out, you'll see that we now have G54 active and the G square bracket eight is equal to two. Go back in, select this, 57, hit work offset, hit OK, press exit, now 57 is active and G8 is equal to five. If we vary out of 
54 through 57, we will then get a dialog error that says inappropriate work offset number. 